Hi, my name is Gilad Silberberg, and I'm a researcher at the Department of Neuroscience of the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. In my lab, we are interested in the neural circuits in the cortex and basal ganglia underlying sensory and motor functions. In particular, we focus on the striatum, which is the input structure of the basal ganglia. In this video, we will describe a recent paper from the lab where we studied how sensory processes are affected by dopamine depletion, which is the main cause for Parkinson's disease. The study was done in collaboration with Professor Gilberto Fisone, also from our department. The first author is Dr. Maya Ketsev, who will now present the paper. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder affecting millions of people worldwide. While its motor symptoms are well studied, little is known about the sensory impairments accompanying the disease. The cardinal pathophysiological feature of Parkinson's disease is death of midbrain dopaminergic cells and the loss of dopamine within the striatum, which affects the properties of the striatal microcircuitry. The principal cells of the striatum are projection neurons called medium spiny neurons, or MSNs. MSNs are divided into two populations which project directly or indirectly to the output structures of the basal ganglia. Direct and indirect pathway MSNs differ in their functional properties. In particular, since they express distinct types of dopamine receptors, they are differently regulated by dopamine. Therefore, when studying the effect of dopamine depletion, it is important to identify the type of the recording neuron. To achieve this, we use transgenic mice expressing channel rhodopsin in either direct pathway MSNs carrying the D1 dopamine receptor or indirect pathway MSNs expressing the D2 receptor. We then use the optopetcher to deliver focal light stimulation during whole cell in vivo recordings. Channel rhodopsin negative cells did not respond to light delivered, whereas positive cells depolarized in response to light and in most cases fired action potentials. This allowed us to classify MSNs during blind in vivo recordings. To reproduce Parkinson's disease in mice, we injected the neurotoxin 6-hydroxydopamine to eliminate the dopaminergic input to the striatum. In our experiments, we injected 6-hydroxydopamine in one side of the brain, thereby generating hemiparkinsonian mice. Following dopamine depletion, we characterized the intrinsic properties of MSNs and their responses to sensory stimulation. Brief air puffs were delivered to the whiskers ipsilateral and contralateral to the hemisphere injected with the neurotoxin. Under normal conditions, MSNs of the direct pathway, or DMSNs, respond to bilateral sensory stimulation. Responses to contralateral stimulations are larger and faster than the responses to ipsilateral stimulation. In contrast, we find that in dopamine-depleted mice, ipsilateral and contralateral air puffs produce similar responses in DMSNs, with comparable amplitude and latency to peak. This indicates that the loss of dopamine in the striatum impaired the ability of mice to encode laterality during sensory stimulation. We also showed that altered sensory responses in DMSNs are accompanied by changes in intrinsic as well as pre- and postsynaptic properties. Last but not least, following administration of levodopa, the gold standard treatment for Parkinson's disease, DMSN responses to whisker stimulations are recovered to control conditions. To summarize, our study shows that dopamine depletion in the basal ganglia does not only result in the well-studied motor deficits, but also affects sensory processes. Specifically, the encoding of bilateral sensory input is impaired, which might contribute to the non-motor deficits in Parkinson's disease.